Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, and we've got the special episode today. So, um, as you can see, we have some sparkling wine here. Uh, it's not just regular sparkling wine, this is wine from the Champagne region of France. And if you watch Sommelier School uh, from last week, you uh, will know that uh, Champagne is the place to get the sparkling wine and go through all that. So, um, I've got here the RNL Le Gras uh, non vintage champagne. It's Blanc de Blanc's Grand Cru. And uh, it retails at Wine Library for $44, $45. I think it was $44.98, I believe, if I remember right. And um, let's taste it first, and then I'll explain why I've got the champagne going. Nice bubbles, nice color. Can already smell it. I mean, I can smell. You know, it's been kind of not not stinking at the house, but it's been kind of. You can really kind of smell it in the kitchen area where I opened it initially. So, um, so you get this bread, this bakery bread component, which is is normal. Uh, actually, very very typical in champagnes. It's the alarm. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you get a bread component, a uh, yeasty component, which, which you expect out of champagne. Mostly that. Not quite pastry, but but you get you get that bakery uh, yeasty uh, nose to it. A little a hint of sweetness to it too. So let's taste it. Let's check it out. Yeah, no spit bucket for the champagne today. Um, really acidic, uh, which is very uh, normal for this type of stuff. Um, you get the, you get some apples. Yeah, they feel like green apple. It's also a little bit of funk. Uh, not funk in, in the sense of earthy funk like Pinot Noirs from, from Burgundy. You get a little funk almost like rot, rotten. Like the bread's been out for a little while. Or it's like, it's like, it's like wet. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the bread's been like uh, uh, rising and it's kind of like that, that wet, warm uh, aroma to it. So not really rotten, but, but more, more of a um, kind of just finished getting proofed. You got a nice tartness to it. Um, you can really cut through a lot of food, and uh, this is some good stuff. It was rated 92 points by uh, Stephen Tanzer, 93 plus by Gary Vaynerchuk at Wine Library. I'm not going to go as high. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna, I, I think I'll agree with Tanzer. I think I'll go 92 on it. Um, excellent. All right, so first of all, Blanc de Blancs. Blanc de Blancs is uh, champagne that's made exclusively from Chardonnay grapes. Um, it's a, uh, 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 they can use three different types of grapes in champagne. They can use Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir, and Chardonnay. This particular one is made out of 100% Chardonnay. They are in an area called, uh, the, uh, re, uh, I'm sorry, a village. The winery is in a village called um, Chuli Champagne. And they are in the Côtes de Blancs uh, part of Champagne, which is kind of the middle part of Champagne. It's kind of like just south of the uh, uh, um, the Marne uh, River. And uh, they've had this area since 1808, or this this winery's been around since 1808. It was founded by a gentleman by the name of, I'm assuming it's Honoré uh, Le Gras. And uh, he started it in 1808. Uh, excellent wine. 
uh, good stuff. Uh, and, and I really wanted something that wasn't your typical run-of-the-mill wine. So let's go through why I've got it. All right, so as many of you know, they've been watching the, the episode or the, or the, uh, the podcast since uh, episode number one, which means we're at number 72. So thank you if you've been watching since then. Um, I, uh, my, my other life is restaurant management, and uh, I have been uh, on the jobless rolls uh, for restaurant management since uh, June. And I have accepted a position with a restaurant, and I start on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Um, so what does that mean for 1337 Wine TV? Uh, really, as far as you guys are concerned, it should mean nothing. I'm recording all three episodes for the week today. Uh, I will be working on sommelier school stuff today. And uh, so I can record it hopefully Wednesday night. And then um, uh, my... my plan is to still have the same schedule. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays are uh, wine reviews. Thursday is sommelier school. Uh, now, the reality of the situation is that Thursdays might be the day I record it, which means it won't be out till probably Friday morning as far as on the website. So, um, but it's it's going to, uh, it's going to tax a little bit on, on the time, but it's nothing that I couldn't do when before. When I first started this, I was actually still employed. And the game plan was to record all my reviews in one day, which at the time was five. I don't have any plans to go into five reviews a week at this at this time. Um, but if for some reason I feel that it's doable and the fact that I have actual income coming in, um, I can uh, afford to do more wines per week. The other thing is that this will probably translate into eventually uh, having wines that are maybe not always $10 and under. I should hope to have... Uh, some wines that are in the fifteen to twenty dollar range, and uh, not all the time, but have, you know, be able to go into that field a little more. Uh, I still want to try to find those great value wines for ten dollars and under. But my initial intent was to really have a twenty dollar and under type of, of show. It's just a matter of economics. So um, it's uh, I'm real excited about this. It's been a long summer. Uh, I've had a great time doing this, and I'm con continued. This is not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, so I'm, I'm already trying to think of what I want to do for episode 100. That's in 28 more episodes. And, um, and that should be December 7th if I did my math correctly. Um, because there might be a couple extra episodes between now and then as far as just three per week. Might have a, a couple here and there that are extra episodes. Um, and let's see. I've got uh, hopefully some uh, Skype interviews coming up soon. Uh, hopefully a, one or two this month, and then hopefully some more a little bit later on, uh, working with a couple winemakers for that. And uh, Sommelier School is going strong. We're going to start with Italy. We're going to do like a history of Italy, Italian wine, and then next week we'll delve into actual wine regions. Uh, let's see. I've run out of my normal time. What else? Um, I'm just excited. I, uh, I'm back into the restaurant industry. Um, as kind of per my own little rules, I won't, I won't talk about where I work, uh, nor will I talk about work, uh, on especially on this podcast, and nor will I discuss the goings on at work uh, in my social media accounts. So, um, people that know me in person, they already know where I'm working, and um, uh, I, I, it's not that I'm being super secretive about where I work, but it's really I need to make sure I have that separation between my personal life and my work life. So uh, that is not to. Uh, come into this, you know, other than I may say, hey, I've been busy at work, <laughs> you know, and I might be behind on something, but I won't, I won't talk about that. Um, what else? This is some good stuff. It probably needs to be chilled a little more. Uh, I did chill it for a while, and then I opened it probably about an hour, probably about an hour and a half ago I opened it. Um, I chilled it for about an hour in the, in the fridge. So um, this is going to go back in the refrigerator because we're going to uh, be drinking some of this tonight. The other thing I want to talk about, VacuVin makes a champagne stopper. So um, it's real simple. You, you put it on there, you pull down so it locks, and you make sure this lever's up first. And pull down the lever. And what it does is it traps. This is a case where you want to trap air in there. You don't want to take the vacuum out. So for champagne sparkling wines, you don't want to use the usual vacuum vents because the, the, the uh, CO2 in the wine will eventually pop the cork. So this 
it's cool. And then there's a pour spout in it, so you don't have to take it off. You just lift the thing, pour it out. Uh, I think it was like 12 bucks at uh, World Market. And uh, yeah, this is at Wine Library. Buy it. I uh, do want to thank Gary Vanderchuk for uh, uh, helping me out on this. And uh, this, uh, he didn't specifically suggest this, but this is one of the wines that he reviewed that I, I watched the review a long time ago. And I was very impressed with, with the wine, and I really wanted to try it. So um, he, we worked out something for me, and I really appreciate that. Uh, he's a great guy, uh, even though he's, quote, my competition. Um, He's not. I mean, I'm not his. He's not mine. We're 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 two we're two people, you know, with the uh, same uh, idea of, of trying to bring, you know, information to 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 people out there about wine. You know, I focus a little bit on lesser um, lesser price wines, but you know, he has plenty of he has plenty of uh, reviews for those wines. But you know, we have there's so much wine out there that you know it's not like I'm gonna be we're gonna be stepping on each other's toes. So uh, I guess that's it. So I want to thank all of you, and we've got more episodes to go. We're at 72 right now, and uh, hope to have another 720. Or actually, see, I hope to have another 930, 928. Anyway, cheers, salud, and we'll see where we begin tomorrow.